So 3D, um, it's the big thing in the industry. And you know that uh, there are, there are uh, problems in this. Um, I like to listen to the, the people who are actually doing this stuff. Um, so significant light loss on the screen. Dim, dim 3D is probably the industry's uh, downfall at the moment. You know, people complaining that Avatar was a dim movie. Uh, you know, for example, a dark movie, you know, you just happen to see it on a screen that wasn't, wasn't lit as well as it might have been. Uh, the thing about the Eton Du issue keeps coming back. Um, bigger lamps don't necessarily get you much more light, okay, and sure does get you much more cost and, and lifetime problems. Um, the lasers, that's different because you can actually stick more lasers in to get more light out. Um, but of course, you want to be efficient so you don't have to stick as many lasers, lasers in. Retrofits also have artifacts like ghosting or color shading. Um, and the external com uh, components get dirty. So for example, if you have a Z screen or, or, or a spinning element in front, uh, it has to be clean, okay? And that is maintenance, and maintenance is costly. Um, the high wind recovery systems uh, are even worse because they have complex alignment, okay? You have to align the two beams to overlap each other, and if you don't do it absolutely perfectly, you're losing resolution. And if you lose, if you, uh, if trying to do that on a curved screen is nearly impossible, okay, because there's almost no way you can get uh, um, it to be aligned everywhere. So uh, people who, who are using the, the current doubling systems, uh, they only use it if they absolutely have to. It adds cost, it adds complexity, and, uh, and can, can lose quality on the screen. So let's talk about our, our system. So first of all, we can add lasers without hurting brightness or hurting lifetime. Okay, we don't. It's not like a lamp, a lamp you stick in that's bigger. Um, this laser is going to get the same lifetime. And, and um, additionally, uh, so it's a single lens system. So there's no alignments. Um, we don't need polarization recovery. Okay, it, polarization is maintained throughout the system. Uh, there's no setup or, or alignment needed. Literally, to, to turn 3D on, there's one button on the machine that's to synchronize the data to, to the, the projector. Okay, and it's triple flash um, that's already being used. Uh, so this literally also can be automated in a TMS. So there's no problem, uh, you know, it can be a fully automated system. So 3D, for, you go, go from a 2D movie to a 3D movie, you're literally automated to do that. Um, we have no fancy switchers. Um, no co fancy color filters and no artifacts. Okay, we don't have ghosting problems. We don't have coloring problems. Uh, we don't have uh, you know a, a, a fancy expensive switcher that we have to worry about. Um, as I mentioned, our, our switcher actually does double duty. It's also our speckle reducer, or okay, one of them. Um, we can allow both linearly polarized glasses. This is on a silver screen. It's polarized. Uh, we, we, we prefer linearly polarized glasses, but you can use circular if you want. Okay, linear turn out to be cheaper. Okay, and if you're, if you're replacing them all the time, those, those extra pennies add up. We calculated it's about $300,000 per screen over the lifetime of the projector. Right, so you start talking about these numbers, right? Uh, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, you talk about the projector being $50,000, $60,000, $70,000. And then, then you, you add up the cost of the differential in just, just going from linear to circular glasses and you find out it's $300,000 over the life of the projector. And it's like, uh, you know, ridiculously offset between, between the, the initial costs. These operating costs are very expensive. Now right now, the, the theater owners don't have to, to, to pay for those glasses necessarily, but, you know, somebody is paying for them and when someone's paying for them, ultimately everyone pays for them. So you can use circular if you'd like, but we found, uh, IMAX has been using linear for a long time, and we found that uh, linear, when you're sitting up straight, is, is, uh, is great, and in fact better, lower ghosting than circular. Uh, so if, if you happen to be uh, you know, with your sweetheart and you want to put your head on your shoulders, you really don't care about the 3D movie anyway. <laughs> um, so, so I don't worry so much about that. <coughs> yeah. The change between the linear and the uh circular is just a change in the projector itself? Uh, one, one component that can be done in the field uh, goes, goes in front of the lens. 
So and our lenses are small. So it's basically screw a filter on. Okay. Um, so capacity so be capacity filter. filter. Passive filter. So we, that's the circular? Mm -hmm. So if it's linear, there's no filter. No filter. Right. So at that point the linear is gonna win for automation purposes. Uh, you can you can run the circular all the time too. You don't have to change anything. For two for two D? For two D. You can you can have that filter in all the time. So it's it is automated regardless. And does that filter the circular filter take away an F stop like an old filter it's almost clear glass? Clear clear to the eye on that one. Um, all components are internal, there's no cleaning other than the end of the lens like you would normally have to do. Um, and we don't require a larger port window uh, that some folks are having to deal with uh, for for uh, in tumbler systems, right? Um, so there's many ways to look at the efficiency difference. Okay, so I'm gonna try and cover it in a couple different ways because it confuses everybody um, when we talk about efficiency differences. So if I take a regular standard uh, 3D system, okay, without a doubler, we're 65% more efficient. If I take a doubler system, we're 25% more efficient. We have two projectors in parallel? No, a, then a, uh, a light recovery system, yes. Um, we're 25% higher efficiency than that, okay? But there's more to it than this, okay? And this, this comes down to the, the, way, the way you think about the, the, the uh, projectors from the beginning, okay? So when you think about the projectors from the beginning, um, you know, you, you uh, size a projector for, uh, for the lamp drop off, okay? Well, so if you take that lamp drop off away now, you can, you can, you can look at the whole thing a, a bit differently. So um, we don't need to oversize very much because the, the lasers don't drop off much. And since the operational costs are lower and the equipment costs are similar, so we trade off, we, we trade off the, the costs of our optics are lower, as you saw from the lenses and the prisms. Okay, and you trade that off, that, that money savings in the, in the optics, and you put that towards the lasers, the costs roughly balance out. So it shouldn't be substantially different than the current projector. Now, we're, we can't set the prices, okay? We're, we're not the commercialization guys, okay? So the partners that are licensing the technology will ultimately set the prices, okay? But there's a balance here, okay? It's not like taking an existing expensive platform and sticking lasers into it and adding all the stuff to it, okay? There's, there's lower cost optics that go into somewhat more expensive lasers and it kind of balances it out, okay? So you can, afford, you can actually afford to have brighter 3D now, okay? And it's not like the operational costs are substantially more expensive. So let me talk about uh, a comparison, okay? This, this is our projector, Codex Laser Projection System. We're on a 40-foot screen, okay, with a silver screen of, of 2.3. Um, we are eight-foot laminates with a, uh, and it's, it's a it's a 10,000 class lumen projector. So we, it's really 11,000 lumens, but it's a 10,000 class projector. Okay, on a on a 2D screen, we're at 23-foot laminates. So a screen gain of one. I'm sorry, on the silver screen, we're 23. Okay, and with 3D we're eight. Okay, so lasers you can turn down the you can turn down the power. Okay, unlike the unlike the xenon bulbs, where if you turn them down they don't they no longer work properly. Okay, so now you can have this 11,000 lumen projector that works constantly delivering 23 for 2D while you turn it down to 14. Okay, and for 3D, you operate at 8. So you're getting enough brightness, and you're going to see the difference in impact of the brightness of, of a brighter 3D. Okay, you'll see that today. Um, now compare that to, yeah? Uh, electrical consumption. Comparable between two systems? 30 to 50% less. Okay. Um, and that doesn't factor in the potential savings, and it partially depends on the design and commercialization, but the potential savings of not having to have a port fan out the top. Okay? You may not have to have that. 
depending upon how it gets commercialized. So, you know, if you take away that fan, right, that's, that's another savings. You can factor that in. So, so let's, let's talk about what you, what you are dealing with today. If you take that same, same 10,000 10, lumen class projector, the Z9 would only deliver 4.3 foot members with a doubler, okay, due to the, the lamp derating, okay. So, you, you would be able to get your, your uh, <coughs> on, this, on this silver screen, you'd be able to get, you know, uh, um, uh, say 18 foot Lamberts or 17 foot Lamberts after the lamp ages the first 100 hours, okay? Um, and after that, you'd be at 4.3, okay? For, 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 for after it's aged, you'd be at 4.3 4 on 3D, okay? So for this 40 foot screen, you wouldn't put a, you wouldn't put a 10,000 lumen projector, you'd put a 15,000 lumen projector in, okay? And you'd have to put a 15,000 projector in lumen projector in, okay, um, to, to, to get it anywhere, you know, anywhere better. So you can see how the si sizing, the sizing proportion changes as well as, uh, you know, what you could deliver to 3D, okay, and the operational costs. So it gets a little, it's a little bit more complicated, but the opportunities are there for both, both uh, cost savings in your operation and brighter 3D, which, it, which the industry is looking for. Does that make sense? Because uh, uh, you know it's, it's a it's a little bit tricky to explain. But I think with the efficiencies. Uh, well, the other the other piece is that when you upsize the lamps on the Xenon, the lamps are both more uh, proportionally a lot more expensive, and they last right. a lot less time. So the differential in terms of the it grow it grows bigger. Grows Try, trying to get that brighter three D is very expensive, whereas with this it is not. I'm curious, and I just don't understand, why is the 3D so much less if we're not using the polarizing filter? But are you only measuring one eye because you're measuring yes. it through a... Yes. And so really, we the equivalent of 16 foot members if you took both eyes. That's right. Because you're, you're well, only but, seeing but, half of the Yeah, but if you think of it like an exposure, yes. okay, I'm only doing one eye at half the time. Right. So It really is more comparative to 16 versus 23 there. Yeah, and exactly. And that's why this is tricky, right? So, but I'm trying to... I'm, I'm trying to be as uh, you're being factual, but, factual, but in, in human, most humans are seen it with two eyes, yes. and so they get a perceived brightness to be more than the eight. Yeah. Okay. So yes, and, and, and you'll be able to judge for yourselves. Yeah. We see the mm. cosmic thing. And interesting that we have content that uh, is both two D and three D. So you see the two D projection at uh, at fourteen foot lamberts, and then remember that when you're watching the three D version of the same movie. And ask yourself how much uh, drama there was in their right? right. And, and you'll see, so we've also got to uh, have content that is graded at uh, 4.3 or, or 5 foot Lamberts, and then we have content that is graded at 8 foot Lamberts. And the, the, what you can actually see in that, in that picture is substantially better as well. So it really helps the 3D effect. Is, is the, the dark time for the flip or the triple flash, is that any different in your system than... Exactly the same. We're using, dark time. we're using the same exact electronics straight out of a DCI projector, I mean literally um, out of it.